for all your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at BlueberryProductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. Hey there, your yard took a real beating this summer. Luckily, Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard has your back. Just feed your grass with Scott's again this fall when the air is cool and the soil is warm. It's the perfect time to give your lawn a boost. If you do, Winter Guard will give your yard the nourishment it needs to help weak, thin grass recover and support root growth, giving you a greener, more resilient lawn both now and next spring. Guaranteed. Grab a bag of Scott's Turf Builder Winter Guard today. You'll be back to barbecuing in no time. This is a Scott's Yard. Hey parents, we all try to be extra careful with our children in the car, but then we get an important call or text. Remember, our children are watching. Make every drive a good example. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash BITZ to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Boss Man Show here with the coach for every and Panthers coach Byron Smith here on Boss Man Show. Coach Smith, being watching, I talk to you, man. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. And yourself? I'm doing good, coach. Well, coach, I start off here, man. Uh, I tell you what, uh, in March here on my birthdays, when everything kind of went down here with the COVID and people canceling games. So, how was it for you all with going to the SWAT tournament going on? Uh, ready to go to Birmingham, and how's that for you all going from the SWAT tournament to spring break, probably, and guys being home for the whole semester? How did you all manage that whole process, coach? Well, it just kind of hit us, kind of you know, obviously unexpectedly. So. Um, you know, we just – we really didn't know really how to proceed. Obviously, we were, in, we were in Birmingham, like I said, getting ready to play the second round of the tournament, and then we got news that the tournament would be canceled. So we thought possibly um, maybe, you know, we would get an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. And obviously, they, a few days later, they came out and said the NCAA tournament was canceled as well. So then it was uh, obviously getting back to campus. Um, you know, school was kind of still going on. But then all of a sudden, it was – everything was kind of shut down. So uh, we really went from – you know, being a group, being there together to, uh, you know, having to, you know, text and, and phone calls and then Zoom calls with our players. And they were, you know, had a lot of questions, you know, were they going to get our seniors? Were they going to get a chance to come back and, and finish out the season? And obviously for me, I would have loved that because we had two of the better players in the league and thought we had a really, really good group. So, um, 
it just it was just a lot of uncertainty as to what what was going to happen and i felt bad because i didn't have a lot of the answers and our mm-hmm. players had a lot of questions uh so what we did quickly we just shifted to you know really hitting your books and trying to finish up strong academically we'll wait to, to hear what's going to happen um the possibility of um maybe getting some additional time you know for our seniors and but obviously that was shot down um so it, it just went it was kind of a sad ending that we didn't get a chance to finish the way that we wanted to but i was real pleased that our, our student athletes our young men finished up strong academically had one of the better semesters gpa wise team gpa wise that, we, that we've had since i've been the head coach at prairie View. so it was productive sad they didn't get a chance to play anymore but they they still have moved, moved on and i think they're going to be very productive uh you know moving forward uh in life well, Coach, you was, uh, I watched the game you played against Texas Southern the previous year. Uh, it was a heck of a game you guys played. You got to go to the tournament. You go on a game there in Dayton. So let's go back that a little bit before you, Coach. That was a great expense for you guys, man, seeing you play that team so hard and getting to win the tournament. So how was that for your group the, the previous year when you guys accomplished that? Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. It was surreal. If, if one word I could, I could use to describe it, uh, a lot of hard work. Um, I was just so happy that, you know, our young men, they bought in and, and uh, they believed, uh, believed in us as a coaching staff and believed that the message that we, uh, we got across to them for the entire year. Um, and obviously to get to that level, uh, finally, uh, to get to that level and to be able to come out on top and then have a chance to move on to the NCAA tournament. We, we talked about it, um, you know, that entire year that we had the potential to, to be a postseason team, uh, to be able to participate in the postseason. Um, and just for it all to kind of come together like that with, with a special group, it was really, really exciting, uh, fulfilling for us as a staff. We put a lot of hard work into it. Um, and just, you know, these young men just, like I said, just really bought in, um, worked extremely hard, um, you know, just always pushing each other. They were really a close-knit group. Um, so it was more of a – we developed into be, becoming a family in that year, and it carried over into this year, but uh, definitely a special time. Uh, that 2018-19 team. Wish we could have gone a little further uh, in the postseason, but 17 and one. You know, I think any coach would take that as a conference record uh, postseason play. So it's definitely a fun time, exciting time, and I think that team will probably go down as one of the best, if not the best, team that Prairie View's ever had uh, for a single season. So definitely proud of the accomplishment. And um, but you know, when you have a little success, you know, you get a little greedy. You kind of want more and more and more. Well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we had a solid season this year um, and had a chance to go back to the tournament. And hopefully uh, whenever we get word and, and however this deal is going to play out with this season, I think we've got a talented group this year that's got a chance to uh, do some special things as well. When I watch your team play, Coach, what I love about your team is your, your team always plays hard and they are engaged in timeouts, which is very – I always judge the team's willingness to buy into the coaches by doing timeouts. So they engage in timeouts. So they finish what you're drawing up because your team plays hard. You coach them hard, but they play hard for you, which I appreciate, appreciate about you and your program because you coach them hard, but they also play hard for you, and they, and they get results as well from the hard coaching that you, you give your team. Yeah, they uh, – all, all the young men that we, we've been fortunate, all the young men that we've recruited, uh, they come from great families. So uh, solid foundation, very respectful young men. Uh, obviously, they're college students. They're going to have their fun and be silly at times and things like that. But it was, it was just a fun group to coach uh, last year's team and this year's team. And you're right. They do pay attention uh, because they're basketball people. And, uh, you know, they, they want to learn. They want to get better. They want to improve. Uh, you know, we, we give them a lot of respect as young men, uh, give them a lot of freedom to be able to, to, to play, you know, their game and things like that. And I think in return, uh, the respect is given back to us as a staff. They know that we're in it for the right reason. and we, The only reason that we're here is, is for their best interest. Um, so it's just click. Uh, when we speak, they listen. But at the same time, smart coaching staff is when the players speak uh, and, and they're always respectful, uh, we give them that same respect and we listen to them and they've got different ideas and things like that, things that they may, uh, you know, this play right here works, coach, a little bit more. Hey, coach, I'm, I'm hot. You know, I, or hey, coach, I think I got a mismatch. You know, the guy guard me. I think I'm bigger, stronger, quicker, faster, whatever the case may be. So I think the respect is there uh, from us uh, as a staff, and they give it back to us, um, you know, as, as players. We give it to them as players, and they give it back to us as a staff. So uh, they're definitely always engaged. And uh, like I said, just a real neat uh, group to coach these past two years. And coach, uh, with the guys being at home all this time, uh, how did your strength coach and yourself and your staff kind of get those guys things to work on for is staying in shape? Because I know you might not have a hoop at your house, but you don't want to come get back to on campus now and be starting from scratch, right? So how did you and your strength coach and your staff kind of give guys things to do 
at home and kind of keep them a somewhat quasi shape when you get them back, trying to get them back in the groove of things now with November 25th, maybe down the road being some, a date you guys started. Well, you know, over the spring, um, you know, we, we lost quite a few guys, uh, but we had our, our, our incoming guys. So our strength coach, uh, uh, coach, coach AB, we call him, did a really good job just communicating with those guys, sending those guys workouts and things like that. He has since departed and moved on to another um, uh, a job. So the strength coach that we have now, uh, Coach Leonard, who's a really, really uh, a strong uh, young strength and conditioning coach that's here at Prairie View, works with the football team. So we're kind of borrowing him this year. Uh, he's kind of been talking to some of the guys uh, a little bit. They haven't had a chance to work with him as of yet because we've been shut down, but he's been sending them some information and things like that. Uh, so, I, so these guys, when we've seen them, they, they all look in pretty good shape. Obviously, they haven't uh, been through a practice yet, the new guys, but uh, they, they look like they're in pretty good shape. They're raring to go. Uh, so we think here pretty soon, once we kind of get, you know, back in the weight room and, uh, you know, we kind of get things going again on a regular basis. Uh, we, we think things will fall into place, and we think that, um, you know, we'll, we'll get back to where we need to be uh, pretty quick. And uh, hopefully we get the okay to play. Like you say, November 25th is the date they're throwing out. December 4th is another date they're throwing out. We just want to get back to the court and start playing basketball, the game that we love. So we'll, we, we think we'll be in pretty good shape um, in terms of our strength, our conditioning, uh, and our basketball uh, skills, I think that will, will take form and take shape. And um, I think if we do get a chance to play this year, I think we got a chance to have a really, really solid team and a solid year. Now, Coach, I'm worried about you guys for this reason, Coach, is, is because I know being HBCU graduate myself at Tennessee State University, I know how it is for the guarantee games. And those, I've seen some contracts. I've seen the COVID clauses in the contracts where you, you get this number if you play, if the fans are mm -hmm. out, fans of this number. And I know from being HBCU grad myself that, hey, you got to raise money for your football, men's basketball, women's basketball, men's basketball, men's basketball. It's how you raise money for mm -hmm. everybody, everything else. So mm -hmm. how worried are you and your administration about, you know, if you, the games aren't, November the 25th, a lot of money will be gone by then. You try to make that money back up to fund everything else around the campus. Well, you know, fortunately for us, I, we got a great administration. Then we got a great system being in the, in the a and system. So um, I think, you know, even if we, you know, don't get all of the guaranteed money that we set out to and that we've been mandated to bring in, I still think we'll, we'll be able to have our bills paid and be able to uh, have a season. Um, but obviously for us, it would be great for us to, you know, if we do play, obviously, and get through the season, get to the NCAA tournament, or maybe we can make some of the money back that we missed out on uh, by being an NCAA tournament team um, and maybe make, you know, obviously make money for the, for the entire conference. So that's kind of how we're thinking. But uh, we've been assured that, that um, you know, all the things that we're going to need to have our basketball season this year, uh, you know, that I guess we got a little bit of a, uh, a reserve tank, uh, maybe <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some, some, some cans that have been buried somewhere in the backyard of the campus that we'll be able to go get and um, to be able to, um, you know, ha have the season that we, that we need to have and everything. So I, I think we'll be fine in that regard. Now, Coach, uh, speaking of uh, your, 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 your young men, how have you talked to them about the COVID thing? Because, you know, they're young guys, 18, 20, and they want to go out and have fun and party and see girls. And how are you expressing them that, hey, one mistake can ruin us all. We can all get well, a break. So how are you trying to keep them in line? Hey, you have to say no. We, we, we really want to say yes. Yeah, just tell them, you know, about being responsible. And uh, this is probably one of the most difficult times for our entire country. And, the, and it's not normal. It's a new normal. Um, and you have to be responsible. And you, and you have to be selfless. You know what I mean by that is, um, if, you know, younger people, they're saying they're not really showing a lot of the symptoms. But these, our, our young players are around other people, you know, older people, uh, no matter where, where it may be, family members, uh, professors, uh, no matter coaches that may be a little bit older, that may not be as healthy. So you, by you not being responsible, you're feeling okay. Uh, if, you have, if you have contracted the virus, you can spread it and you can give it to someone that may not be, his immune system may not be as strong as yours. So, you know, you got, you're gonna have to limit you know, your access and being around people is difficult. Uh, you know, necessary places to go, you know, do go. But if you don't have to go to a place, being out in public, uh, you know, restaurants or, or things of that nature, the mall, uh, you're going to have to be very self, self, selfless and you're going to have to sacrifice a lot. This, these are the messages that we've been telling them for a while now. And um, I, I think to this point, I think that they've kind of followed the instructions and they haven't done too much. 
I think all of them in, in pretty good shape and COVID free. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully it'll continue to be that way. Uh, so I, I think our team has been very responsible and I'm proud of them for that, but it's not over yet. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, and, and, and it's going to, it's going to, it's going to be a while, I think before uh, they'll be able to get back to their normal and they're doing the things that they've always done. But uh, we're going to constantly remind them uh, safety first, uh, academic second, basketball third. Most definitely. And coach, I know what you've been an HBCU head coach, man, what's going on with the country with uh, social unrest right now. How have you been using these Zoom meetings to kind of tell your young men that, hey, you got to be very vigilant. This is happens in real life. And, you know, take off your privilege and them jerseys. You as a young black man, <laughs> you know, that you can't lose sight of that, right? So how have you been Absolutely. using these Zooms to teach these young men what you and I know being with our experience in life that, hey, it's, once you take off that basketball jerseys, you're just a black man. You need to be careful and watch how you move. It's just like the same the same uh, story we tell them with the whole COVID about being safe. Uh, you know, you are, you know, uh, African-American. This is a, a very difficult time right now. Uh, you know, limit your, again, limit your access. You know, even if we, we, we've talked about this, uh, you know, since I've been the head coach. I mean, obviously with the George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, uh, these situations, you know, the, um, these new crises that have, that, have, that, have, that have come up in the last, you know, four to five to six months, uh, obviously the, the, the nation is kind of, you know, paying attention. So it was a lot of, um, you know, attention being paid to, uh, you know, the injustices, you know, in, in our society. But, you know, where we are, where we're located out here in Walla County, it's not a lot of us out here. Um, so we've, we've talked to our guys all the time about uh, your dress, your image, you know, when you're going places, making sure that you uh, are not being too casual. You have to be aware, you know, wearing your hat backwards. I mean, that may be okay in some places, but I think that that is something that gets the attention of, um, you know, of, of police officers that may not be fans of athletes. They may not be fans of African-American people. Uh, so you have to be very, very careful. If you do get pulled over, you do get stopped if in public, uh, riding down the road, be respectful, be respectful to the officer, try to defuse any situation. Don't be mouthy. Um, you know, yes, sir. No, sir. Never hurt anybody. Uh, so we talk to these guys all the time about that, about the image and about you know, projecting the right image uh, that I'm a college student, I'm an athlete, and I'm only here to do the right thing. Uh, if you're speeding and they give you a ticket, you know, hey, don't, don't, give, me any, don't give me any lip back. Just, hey, just take the ticket. Uh, if it's $100, that, that, that's nothing compared to your life. So we, we talk to them all the time about, um, you know, not being four and five in a car. I mean, I, I think that is something that gets the attention of, of, of officers who, again, may not be uh, fans, you know, may not, uh, you know, care much for African-American people. So um, just to be very, very careful, you know, be very careful, be respectful. Uh, don't be out at night, you know, around the campus, off the campus, unless you absolutely have to, uh, you know, 12, one o'clock in the morning, you should probably be in your apartment and you're doing, not out riding around, joy riding and looking for something to get into. We talk to them about this all the time for years and years and years. And fortunately for us here at Prairie View, we haven't had many cases of our athletes having issues with the police. Um, but, you know, we've got new guys here now. So uh, getting them accustomed to how things are around the area and the environment, uh, you know, just, you know, just be smart. You know, if you don't have to go out, don't go out. You know what I mean? And again, but the main thing is be safe, be respectful, uh, be aware that these are some difficult times right now. There's a lot of uh, attention being paid and, and everybody, e even on the other side, they, I mean, they're not happy with the, the, the negative light that some of the police officers have, have been placed in. Uh, so I think, you know, you could easily have some police officers that are mad about that, uh, that are angry and, um, you know, that think that, you know, the way that they handle the situation with, with a young person uh, may be the appropriate way. We see it differently, you know, maybe they feel threatened. Maybe they've had a situation as a police officer where they've seen one of their fellow officers, you know, be harmed, you know, by someone. And, you know, they're, they're kind of, you know, a little bit uh, on edge a little bit about it. And, and maybe they're a little bit, maybe be a little bit too excessive in some of the, in some of the treatments of, of, of some of these young, young African-American people. So I know I'm saying a lot. Uh, boss, but the main thing is for our guys to be safe. To be no, aware, you're saying everything you say, Coach. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're yes, great, yes, man. This uh -huh. is important to hear. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, Coach, like you said, man, you know, even here in Atlanta, man, we had something happen here with Rachel Brooks. So I, I even look for me. I take off my Atlanta Hawks gear or my whatever gear I have on for the day. I'm just a black, I'm just JR. I can be. Yes, sir. I, 
<laughs> you know, I, 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 I live in the burbs in Atlanta, so you know, it's not very yeah. many of me out where I live at, right? Because I'm blessed. Right. But like, you know, mm-hmm. I gotta move differently around. So even being a man in my thirties, I know I gotta be different. And you know, I can't just walk around here like it's all good. So for a young men to get that lesson at an early age from you, absolutely, it can help them rush their lives, coach, for for sure. Mm-hmm. Now, coach, I, I'm gonna yes, be sir. happy, coach. With, you can be happy about this, coach. You know, your sister Lana and then Bussy uh, now is at Alcorn State. Uh, I know you get you have, you, have, you, have, you have a tree now, coach. You, you have a tree now, <laughs> so I just feel having a tree now. Have a, he right in, in the college with you, so so when you play, he, he knows all your plays. You know, you, so how's that, how's that gonna be for you, man? <laughs> I tell you what, I, I couldn't be happier and more proud of a, of a of a young man than Landon Bussey. He really helped us build this program here. He was a, a pillar, um, you know, in, with our program. A lot of a lot of the credit uh, he deserves. Head coaches get most of it or all of it, but he deserves a lot of it. And he helped me be, become a better coach uh, as well, just with his selfless attitude. Uh, nothing was too low for him to do sweep the floors i mean whatever he had to do to help us build our program he's an unbelievable recruiter great communicator great around campus uh in the various um factions of our campus financial aid housing academics i mean he just he just was a he was a a, a junkyard dog he did everything for this program so um i'm proud of him that he's got an opportunity to move on and, and to fulfill a goal and a dream of his to be a head coach um Obviously, I'm not going to like him a couple nights out of the year once we get into conference play. Uh, I'll, I'll lose some sleep uh, changing up some of the stuff. We'll, we'll, the, the other teams we play against, we'll, we'll do our normal prayer review stuff. But obviously, when we play against Alcorn, we'll have to change up some things because he, he, he knows our plays better than I do. So, uh, oh, wow. So that, yeah, he does. He really does because, you know, I'm, I'm getting older, getting starting to get a little forgetful. But he, he, he would remember things, but he, he knows our system as well as I do. And uh, we're really proud of him, happy. And, and, and I think that that's the true measure of a coach, not only winning games, but to be able to try to help your assistants get an opportunity to move on and be a head coach too. And I think that when you do that, um, I, I think your work's not in vain. When it, winning games is important, but also, um, you know, moving other people to higher places. I, I think that's part of it as well. And I think a lot of head coaches – should want to do that. I'm proud to be able to do it here at Prairie View uh, and him at Alcorn. It didn't happen a lot in our league, uh, but hopefully someone else can do that and help one of their assistants get an opportunity to become a head coach. I think it's part of the job, and I'm, I'm very proud to uh, say that we, we did help somebody move on and, uh, and to get an opportunity to be a head coach uh, at a Division One program. So happy for Landon and his family. And when I had him on, Coach, he, said, he spoke about how you gave him responsibility. You helped mold him as a coach and make him the coach he is today. So he's so really highly of you and what you meant to him when I had him on in April, man. So I know the love he has for you and the love he, you have for him is for real. I, I can feel it and hear it in both of your voices about each other. Yeah, I, I told him to check. I heard that, that 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 radio interview, too. I told him the check is in the mail. I appreciate him saying nice <laughs> things about me. Uh, but, <laughs> but, no, he uh, – you know, he's like he, – you know, he's like a little brother to me. He really is. He's like a little brother. And um, I'm just a good all-around person. I'm just a good all-around person, uh, you know, solid as they come, and just wishing nothing but the best for him moving forward, uh, you know, there at Alcorn. He'll do a great job. And uh, Alcorn is a better is a better place today because Landon Bussey is there working, for sure. I, I say that with all sincerity. And, Coach, sometimes your conference as a whole, I feel like, you know, a lot of people sleep on a SWAC conference. But the basketball SWAC is very, very good. I mean, the the Mm -hmm. young men are very talented. The coaching is hard. You know, games are close each night. And it's no Mm -hmm. easy night in in, in the SWAC conference. A lot of people don't realize that. They look all as a SWAC. Mm -hmm. But, no, the ball you guys are playing and the coach you have in in your league are top out to one of a kind for sure. Yeah, I I agree. I think think, uh, coaching is – it's really strong and solid. I got some outstanding young coaches who I think are going to have some opportunities to uh, maybe do some other things at other institutions and an opportunity presents itself. And I definitely think the, the, the players um, are right there on par. I mean, I, we've had a few players here at Prairie View that I've felt that uh, could have easily played in a lot of other conferences uh, that are, you know, considered, you know, higher conferences than Prairie View. So I think uh, the coaching is great. I think the, the, the playing is really good. I think the style of play is really good. I think the, the visibility that we've started to get, I think the respect uh, around the country has kind of increased a little bit. So I, I think swipe basketball is, is, is solid right now. And I, I think we've got a lot more room to, to go and grow. And I think that we will. I'm, I'm proud uh, to be a Southwestern Athletic Conference basketball coach. 
Uh, and then this, this has been a great experience for me here at Prairie View and, and looking for many more good years to come. Uh, but definitely, uh, definitely feel good about the fraternity of coaches we have in this league. Um, really strong basketball. Like, I agree with you 100%. Well, Coach Smith, good to catch up with you, man. It's been all too long. We got to keep doing this more often, brother. It was Absolutely. fun. It was fun, man. Absolutely. Anytime you need me, you know where I am. You reach out, and I'm, I'm more than happy to help in any way that I can. Thank you, Coach. Hey, Coach, be safe. We'll talk to you real soon, brother. Okay, appreciate you. Take care. God all bless. Right. That's Byron Smith on the Box Special, people. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today, True Speech, and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it. A gorgeous tan from Suntan City gives you an inner glow that relights the fire when you run into your first crush. Vicky, who is that? An old boyfriend. Lucky you just tanned at Suntan City. Lucky he's single. We're doing lunch tomorrow. Won't be single for long then. During Tour of the City, try all five tans, including spray tan, for just four ninety nine. dollars Restrictions may apply. Click to buy now. When you're a teen, you finally get to make some of your own decisions. Who are you going to hang out with? What do you want to be? Are you going to glance at that text while driving? Remember, a split second is all it takes for something tragic to happen. Be in the zone. Turn off your phone. Visit childrenshospital.vanderbilt.org slash B-I-T-Z to learn more about our teen driver safety program. Brought to you by Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt, the Ford Motor Company Fund, and the Allstate Foundation. It's maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer, all the stars are closer Tell me what you gonna do to me Confrontation ain't nothing new to me You could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue But you can't bring the truth to me Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and SZA Okay Maybe the night that my dreams might let me know All the stars are closer With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. Yeah, yeah, it's your man, JC, the host with the most, baby. And it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down at Clicks Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the liveest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only $5 after. Great food. We got drink specials. We got all kind of games, man. We got the pool tables popping. Whatever you want, we got you, man. Come on out. Have a good time with us each and every Saturday night. That's Clicks Sports Bar, Memphis.